Good morning and welcome to St. John's McGuanago's Morning Praise. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall declare your praise. Hasten to save me, O God. O Lord, come quickly to help me. Praise be to God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Let us worship him. O come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving. Let us make a joyful noise to him with songs of praise. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. The deep places of the earth are in his hand. The heights of the hills are also his. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hand formed the dry land. O come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our Maker, for he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Give thanks to the Lord, call on his name, make known among the nations what he has done. This week we'll talk about five topics that are loosely related to each other. We're going to talk about prophecy today, then typology, faith, reason, and philosophy, and get a sense of what scripture has to say about these five topics. Let's start with prophecy. I'm going to give you an example from Psalm 22. Psalm 22 is talking about Christ dying on the cross, even though it was written a thousand years before that actual event. I'll pick up at verse 17. All my bones are on display. People stare and gloat over me. They divide my clothes among them and cast lots for my garment. But you, Lord, do not be far from me. You are my strength. Come quickly to help me. The word of the Lord. Prophecy is a very big deal in the Old Testament. Uh, it depends on how you count, but there can be upwards of 300 prophecies that uh, connect us to Jesus Christ. That is, things that were said, that said were said hundreds of years before Christ was even born, and then they come true in Christ. This is a game changer because this is proof that scripture is what it says it is, and that is the infallible word of God. So if we think about it this way, let's take all the prophecies. Let's say there's 300 of them, but we're going to eliminate the ones that are vague. There's going to be a king. Well, anybody could be, any of the kings could fulfill that prophecy. It doesn't necessarily mean Jesus Christ. It's too vague. We could also eliminate from the conclusion that things, uh, prophecies that perhaps could have been theoretically faked. So Jesus could have said, Zechariah the prophet says that the Messiah is going to ride a donkey up to Jerusalem, and so that's what I can do. Theoretically, that is something that Jesus could have made up. But then there are prophecies that are very unique, that is, they are specific, but they are also things that could not have been faked. So, for instance, an example of one of those would be one we just heard, that they divided my clothes and cast lots for my garment, being betrayed for 30 pieces of silver, being born in Bethlehem. All of these are highly specific, and they can be theoretically proved, and they are things that could not have been faked. This is really a game changer when you think about it, that when the Old Testament predicts something about Jesus and it comes true, that really means that the Old Testament is truly God's word. That's a game changer for those of us who are doubting maybe the reliability of Scripture and those on the outside of the church who are wondering, can we really trust this thing called the Bible? So prophecy plays an important role. Prophecy also uh, plays an important role for us because it centers in on Jesus Christ. Now, some of these prophecies are very, very vague. They talk about uh, a great king coming. They talk about the restoration of Israel. But when and where and how, these are questions that are often left unanswered. Maybe one last thing about prophecy. Prophecy in the Old Testament often is like you're looking at a mountain range. When you look at a mountain range from a distant it, distance, it looks like just one range. But once you get into the mountains, you know that there are valleys and there may be multiple ranges. There's multiple peaks throughout a mountain range. So when we look from the point of view of the Old Testament and we're looking ahead to the fulfillment of these prophecies, often we only see one fulfillment. That would be the restoration of the kingdom of Israel. You may think of e Ezekiel 
talking about the dry bones in the valley of Israel, in the in the in in the barren land that was left after the exile, and how he sees that these bones are put back together, and the whole army of Israel stands up. From his point of view, that seems to have one fulfillment, and that is the people of Israel who are in the Babylonian captivity are going to come back and they're going to rebuild their nation. The army of Israel will stand once again. But from our point of view, that is hindsight, we see that there are two fulfillments fulfillments of this prophecy. One is the restoration of Israel. They would once again have an army. They would rebuild Jerusalem. But we also see that this is the resurrection of the dead, that this is something about Jesus Christ rising from the dead and about you and I rising from the dead. So prophecy gives us an indication that the Bible is reliable. It also focuses us on Christ and the two fulfillments often. One fulfillment of Christ may be coming the first time or a fulfillment in the Old Testament, but then also a fulfillment at the end of time usually. And this connects us to these prophets of old. It's not just a prophecy for ancient Israel. It's a prophecy for the true Israel, that is the church, that is us. The Te Deum. We praise you, O God. We acclaim you as Lord. All creation worships you, Father everlasting. To you, all angels, all the powers of heaven, cherubim and seraphim sing in endless praise. Holy, 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 Lord God of heavenly hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. The glorious company of apostles praise you. The noble fellowship of prophets praise you. The white-robed army of martyrs praise you. Throughout the world, the holy church acclaims you. Father of majesty unbounded, your glorious true and only Son, and the Holy Spirit, advocate and guide. You, Christ, are the King of glory, the eternal Son of the Father. When you became man to set us free, you humbled yourself to be born of a virgin. You overcame the sting of death and opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. You sit at the right hand of God in the glory of the Father. We believe that you will come to be our judge. Come then, Lord, and help your people, bought with the price of your own blood, and bring us with your saints to glory everlasting. In the morning, O Lord, I call to you. Be merciful to me and hear my prayer. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And we pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And we also pray, O Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, you have brought us safely to this new day. Defend us with your mighty power, and grant that this day we neither fall into sin nor run into any kind of danger. And in all we do, direct us to what is right in your sight. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. Let us praise the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen.